Dartmouth College in 2009, and his latest book is Art Healing, Visual Art for Emotional Insight and Well-Being. Uh, he's been practicing psychiatry in Portland, Maine, and um, spending time between Portland and New York City, where he's been regularly appearing as a co-host on the positive mind and performing psychiatric consultations. He recently was asked to give a keynote address at the American Medical Student Association plenary session in Providence and at their annual meeting in Los Angeles. He was educated at Princeton, Dartmouth Medical School, and his residency was at the University of ne New Mexico the School of Medicine. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the book that he has, his newest book. I was very uh, flattered that he asked me to write something to go in the book, and I'd like to read this to you. The emotional, startling, and often revelatory power of art has been described by writers in the past, most notably by Stendhal, who described the Stendhal syndrome. The Stendhal syndrome refers to uh, a passage in one of the books by Stendhal in which a young woman goes to Florence and sees the art for the first time, and with this first exposure to so much great art, she begins to have physical symptoms, uh, palpitations, uh, sweating, uh, feelings of faintness, and in fact, this is a real phenomenon, and every year in the city of Florence, several dozen people experience this, and they're taken to hospitals or to the police station, so it's a well-documented medical syndrome. In art healing, uh, Jeremy Spiegel takes this to a much higher level of understanding and clinical usefulness. He describes what I consider an exciting new technique to help people unearth the memories, feelings, and unconscious organizing principles that can hamper and sometimes cripple us. In vignettes of patients and descriptions of his own reactions to art, he describes the intrapsychic processes that are stimulated by viewing artworks and how that can lead to insights and emotional growth. And he also suggests to the reader ways to use this pa uh, technique in working, working with patients and in viewing art oneself. Won't you please welcome Dr. Jeremy Spiegel. As always, thank you very much, uh, Barry. That was a beautiful introduction. So um, what is art healing? What is art healing? It's a way in. It's a way in using art, someone else's art, as a vehicle to self-discovery. I'd like to first tell you a, a gorgeous story about a man, Charlie, who, after reading the book Art Healing, discovered that what he had been doing decades ago on a bench inside the Art Institute of Chicago was something active and personally transformative. His then unnamed process, what I call art healing, helped him understand how art, not just some passive relaxation on Tuesdays when uh, the, the museum was open uh, for free to the public, um, not just some passive relaxation, but art catalyzed his sobriety from alcohol, and it catalyzed his making critically important positive changes in his life. Now, many years ago, Charlie, Charlie's life turned to crap, basically. Living out of duffel bags, not a single cherished or sentimental uh, possession, including, as he tells it, cherished people uh, in his life at the time. Trying to dry out he was unemployed and removed from life. And yet, somehow he found himself every Tuesday at the Art Institute of Chicago. And at the museum, he wouldn't just find himself anywhere. He found himself each time. And this went on for weeks and months. Each time, on a bench, staring bleary-eyed at a single work, the famous Surat pointillist painting Sunday afternoon on the Isle of Le Grand Jatte that I'm sure every single one of you knows well. He had thought then that he had been going to a place, I mean, he didn't really think much about what he was doing, but uh, in retrospect, 
uh, around that time, he had thought that he had been uh, going to a place to relax uh, and do nothing. Uh, but now, now, so many years later, he gains the perspective of what was very much active doing, unwittingly enacting art healing. He told me this. He said, the museum then was just a place to me. That's it. Just a place to be when I had nowhere to go, nowhere else to go. Charlie would get up close, and the painting then became dots, a chaotic pattern of multicolored dots, blurry and signifying nothing. Indeed, a reflection of his then recent life. And with distance, with distance, physical distance, the perspective, a change in stance, a physical change in stance, brought clarity and vision and peacefulness, pulling chaos into some order by his physical remove from the painting, gaining true perspective on multiple levels of visual meditation. I asked him about the content of the painting. Perhaps the content uh, had something to do with his uh, improvement. His initial response, he says, no, no. It was, it was simply the dots becoming a picture, and he identified with that kind of transformation, not the content of the picture. But, but wait, I mean, he said this very quickly, and I, I, I thought to myself, wait a minute, what if this what if this were just an optical illusion that he saw? What if this were a visual trick, a visual trick that he discovered, uh, say, in a psychology textbook? What then? Would it be just as useful or just as transformative? And he hesitated for, for uh, a, a bit of time and then and seemed nervous to me. And then he revealed to me uh, in, in a soft voice that he had been molested as a child. And indeed, that molestation likely had so very much to do with how he had been living at that time, how, and it had very much to do with his drinking alcohol so dangerously. And it had everything to do with his lack of sentimentality in his life, the lack of close connections, the lack of intimacy with anyone, and utter disconnection with himself. And that, as a matter of fact, his molestation, the core trauma which informed his psychopathology and alcoholism occurred where? It occurred in a putatively peaceful place. In fact, a park, a park, much as the one he had become to know intimately in the work of Georges Seurat, a Sunday afternoon on the Isle of La Grande Jatte. And so, so these many years later, a genuine understanding occurs, pulling the aesthetic aspects of the art the painting, the color, the line, the dots, pulling them together as a reflective metaphor for the process of recovery. And more, and more beyond the aesthetic, that there were indeed symbolic elements, the environment of the park, that were directly relevant to Charlie's life and trauma, and so their presence clearly compelled him to sustain a relationship uh, with the work. Now further, in considering other ways, other ways he may have let this painting work on him, he discovered, he discovered then that his attention to history, the history of his family, the history of his great grandmother whose antique table he then started to involve himself with rescuing of all things um, at his uh, state then, uh, this became very, very important to him after days and days and weeks and weeks spent at the museum. And so, and so what do we have here? We have an unconscious process, a treatment of a condition of living, a sorely needed perspective for a broken man, and involving, simply by looking, simply by looking, not at a flower or at a mandala or a crucifix or that strangely yellow hair of Mrs. Adler on the label of a certain uh, gefilte fish, uh, but at a, at, a, at a, you know exactly who I mean? Good, okay. It's hard to know if it'll work or not. For some reason, at, this is my third time speaking here, I, I sort of channel the borscht belt, borscht belt when I'm giving the talk, so uh, forgive me. Uh, anyway, uh, a work created by someone else, a work created a long time ago here, uh, a work created uh, by a great artist. And in return, 
In ret 